Hi, I'm Kristen Rawcliffe and I'm an artist and art tutor. In this short video I'm going to talk to you about how to use acrylic paint and get it to work for you on your brush and how to blend with wet paint and also using the dry brush technique. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is how to get the acrylic paint evenly onto your brush. So I just dip it into the paint and then I wipe the excess onto the palette just so it's really even on the brush. It's on the tip and the body of the brush, not it hasn't sort of gone up into the heel or onto the metal bit. And so and then I just paint it onto the canvas nice and evenly. And when I go back, well particularly if I'm changing colours, I'd wipe the excess off on some kitchen roll, give it a good old swish in the water, wipe off the excess water and then go back in and repeat the process. Sometimes you need to wipe a little bit of the paint off as you're going along. Okay, so that's the second one done. Give that a bit of a wash. Now, what you don't want to do is forget to get rid of the water before you paint because otherwise the water will drip down under the paint and if that's wet paint, it'll actually take the paint off. Also, I don't want to get in so much paint that it's gone onto the metal part of the brush because then I get lumps and unpredictable ridges in the paint that I'm using and it's not even. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to blend colours while they're still wet. So I'm painting, I'm going to paint a variety of blues and, and because the paint's wet, they're going to merge together. So the first one's going on and then I'll clean my brush and choose another blue. And what I want to do is work quite quickly so that the paints are still wet when I apply the next colour. So choose the next colour and just paint it on underneath. And you can see I paint it on and then I pull it up slightly so it's just merging softly into the layer above. Okay, so give it another wipe, add a bit more, a bit too much paint on there, but never mind. I can spread it all about so it doesn't matter too much. And then make sure that goes down. And then once again, I'm going to have to work fairly quickly to choose the next colour and just paint it on below and then make sure it blends into the colour above while it's still wet. It looks very similar here, but it is actually a slightly different colour. I've got a turquoise blue above and a king's blue below. Okay, so just finish painting that bit on, pushing it across. And then, yeah, just make sure that's blended nicely in. And then choose the last colour, which is a turquoise green, just at the bottom there to, to finish it off. And I have to, still making sure to work while it's still wet and trying to keep that blend even where the colours go into each other. This would be nice for skies or for any kind of blend of colour. I could have been a bit more careful here I think. Now you might have been wondering why I've taped all around the sides of this. Um, basically it's so I've got nice straight edges when I take it off. Um, but it's a little bit more than that. It's because when you're painting in acrylic you don't want to slow yourself down by trying to be careful when you get up to the edges. Um, and you've got more freedom to paint if you just paint across and don't worry about where you're going to stop. Um, so that's why I've done that. Although you can see here that I think what I've done is I've been a bit too zealous and I've gone over the edges of the tape. But never mind, um, I can wipe that off. So the next thing I'm going to do is paint a circle and I'm going to paint different layers of colour above each other to try and give a feeling of depth. Now... Um, when you paint onto an acrylic canvas, the, the strokes that you make are naturally sort of fairly rough at the edges. You could call it dry brushing. Um, it depends how much paint you've got on your brush. The less you have, the more of a rough, kind of almost crayon-like dry brush effect you get. So you can see as I'm painting the circle that on the outside of the circle where the brush is fairly dry, then you've got this kind of soft rough effect. And then I can use a bit more paint in the middle just to fill it on. And I'm turning my brush over forwards and backwards just to make sure I've got all the paint off my brush as I, as I fill it in. And just a note on colour there, I've used a very dark phthalo blue and a yellow to make a dark green. Okay, so I've let the first layer dry completely and I'm going to add a second layer. And I'm going to make it a little bit lighter than the first layer. And I'm doing that by mixing a lighter blue with the same yellow. So it's an ultramarine blue that I'm using there. And I'm mixing the colours next to each other on the palette. So I've got them to hand should I need them um, again. So now I'm painting over the dry layer. Once again, I'm trying to keep the edges quite dry. So then, And then fill in a bit more paint in the middle. 
and sometimes you find you have to wipe a bit of the excess paint off when you're trying to get the rough edge just for us it can be it's not quite as rough as you need it to be and I want that kind of softness to the edge of the of the second circle so just continue with that around the edges put, turn my brush over so I'll get all of the paint off it and just get a nice soft edge there now I'm going back in for the final layer I'm just going to use quite a bright green colour here which I'm mixing mostly from yellow because the yellow is quite transparent and it takes on some of the green colour beneath it and you'll find that acrylic actually dries a little bit darker than when you paint it on which can be a little bit um, frustrating sometimes but there you go that's such is the way and with acrylic you, it, it's very different to watercolour in that you can paint the dark layers first and then the light layers can go over the top so it's really flexible you can do it the other way around as well and go light to dark it takes a little bit of getting used to doing the dark to light but it is really um really really great so yeah i'm just kind of doing the same thing really filling in the middle with a fair bit of paint and then trying to get the brush to be a bit rougher as i go around the outside which is meaning wiping um the cleaning the brush from time to time just so that there's not too much on it and just clearing up the edges so I'll get that nice kind of gradient as it goes around. I'm just going to show you another example of using the paint a little bit drier um, although I've started off with quite a lot of paint on my brush but around the edges I'm going to make it nice and dry so it, it could be something a technique that I'd use to add texture maybe in some foliage or maybe on some clouds so I've got quite a cheap brush here um, it's quite a rough brush you can see I'm sort of varying the pressure as I go towards the outside of the shape that I'm making so the the kind of the mark is disappearing into the into the background and you can see it's just got that real rough textured effect that you might find in bushes or in, in landscape so finally I'm going to do some stippling, a second layer over the top of this um, sort of light blue cloudy type shape um, to give it a bit more form, um, that means you know to make it look a bit more 3D or as if the light's shining on it but I want it to be in a textured way so that's why I'm stippling so I'm using the brush almost upright and just dotting it on to the layer below to give it a bit more texture. You've got to be a bit careful here not to put too much paint on like I've just done because then it becomes more of a solid shape and you want it to be very, very soft. So you may have to wipe your brush in between uses. And that's just a little bit about some ways you can use your paintbrush to give different textures and effects using acrylic paints. So have a good old practice and try and think once again of where you would use a wet on wet blend so maybe in the sky or where you would use a kind of a, a gradation of different colours different tones of the same colour moving inwards so that would maybe be a solid object of, or some fruit or something or where you would use some texture so that that would most likely be in, in some sort of landscape with trees and bushes have a play and see what you can come up with I'll be back with more about acrylics very soon if you've enjoyed this video, you can find out more about me and what I do by visiting my website at www.kristinrawcliffe.co.uk where I've got blogs and tutorials and lots of pictures of my paintings. Um, and if you've got any requests, let me know through the contact form or drop a comment below. Thanks and see you soon.